before your time, uh, we didn't publish compensation of, of executives. So when that came into focus about, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago, then all the publications had every, the top five people in the company. And people would come up and say, congratulations on your success. And they were referring specifically just to your, your, the amount of money you made. And somehow or other, it didn't seem to me that that was the entire definition of success. And yet people seemed to take it as the only evidence they had of success. Because I think a lot of people I saw made them a lot of money. They weren't particularly smart. They lucked into it or they were unethical. So I developed my own little list of seven benchmarks of success, which I still use. And they are basically <coughs> these. And you need to have, keep your life in, in some kind of balance. And I tick them off and I say it's your family, your friends, your finances, your career, your health, your infrastructure, meaning your support systems, and most of all, your reputation. Because if you don't keep those things in balance and your whole objective is to make a lot of money and you do it at the expense of your family or your health or uh, all kinds of combinations, and there are different balances at different times in your life, but over time, those things have to be balanced in my view. And most of all is your reputation. I've got to tell you, when you leave this planet, the only thing you leave behind or alternatively take with you is your reputation. And if you screw that up, I'm telling you it's the worst thing that can happen to you. So I've been preaching that for many years. There's been evidence that people haven't kept those in balance and they haven't really concerned themselves about their reputation in my view. And in large part, it was driven by greed. And really in the world we live in, the free enterprise system that's been so good to us, the whole system depends on trust, a matter of trust and ethics, whether we like it or not. And what happened in financial markets and what happened in compensation for people got carried away to unbelievable lengths. And so now we're all suffering from that. So the implications of this for our society go back to something very basic and it has to do with ethics and principles and integrity and trust. One of the persons that I admire a lot is Warren Buffett. Having met him a couple of times and I've followed him with interest and people asked him many years ago, what do you look for when you hire a CEO? And he has something like, I don't know, 25 CEOs reporting to him. He said, I look for three things. Number one, they should know something about the business, which is obvious. Number two, they must have a lot of energy. Most people don't realize how tough these jobs are. And number three, I need somebody that's got a high degree of integrity. And I think those are three pretty valuable assumptions, and he's done pretty well by following them.